Everyone's hyped about Bitcoin, Ethereum, and overnight millionaires. But here's the truth. None of it works without one invisible piece of the puzzle. Without it, Bitcoin dies. Ethereum dies. The whole system collapses. Meanwhile, you've probably heard about staking, wallets, or NFTs. But almost nobody explains this. And yet, it's the reason your $20 transfer doesn't vanish into thin air. Today, we'll break down what nodes are, how they work, and even how some people earn rewards just for running one. By the end, you'll finally see the hidden engine that keeps crypto alive. A node is just a computer, but one with a very specific job. It stores and checks the blockchain. Imagine the blockchain as a giant library. Every time someone makes a transaction, it's like adding a new page. A node's job is to hold a copy of the library and double check that every new page follows the rules. There are two main types of nodes. Full nodes. These hold the entire history of the blockchain from the very first transaction. They're like librarians who keep every single book, every page perfectly organized. Light nodes. These don't store everything, just the essentials. They're like library visitors who only carry a summary instead of the full archive. Here's the key. Nodes don't trust anyone blindly. Every node verifies transactions independently. That's why blockchains are called trustless. You don't have to rely on a central authority. Okay, so what do nodes actually do all day? Picture thousands of computers scattered around the world, all talking to each other. Every time someone sends crypto, say Alice sends Bob $5 in Bitcoin, that transaction gets broadcast like a radio signal. Each node that hears it runs the same checks. Does Alice really have $5 in her wallet? Did she sign the transaction with the right private key? Has she tried to spend the same coins twice? If everything looks good, the nodes pass the transaction along to others, like a chain of messengers. Eventually, it reaches a miner or validator who adds it to the next block. But even then, nodes don't just accept it blindly. They also review the block itself. Think of nodes like inspectors in a global system. Every move, every transaction has to be reviewed. And because there are thousands of inspectors, it's almost impossible to cheat. If one node is wrong or malicious, the rest of the network rejects it. That's why nodes are described as the nervous system of a blockchain. They don't just store data. They enforce the rules 24-7 without interruption. Up to now, we've treated nodes as if they were all the same. But in reality, they don't all play the same role. Some nodes act like librarians, preserving every page of history. Others work like gatekeepers, deciding which new pages get added to the book. Full nodes are the librarians. They download the entire blockchain, every transaction since day one. Their job is to preserve the full history and check that each new block follows the rules. They don't usually get paid, but without them, the record wouldn't be trustworthy. Validator nodes are the referees on the field. In proof-of-stake systems like Ethereum, these nodes don't just store data. They also confirm new blocks. To qualify, they lock up coins as collateral. If they play fair, they earn rewards. If they cheat, the network slashes their stake. Here's the simple way to remember it. Validators are just a special kind of node. Picture a classroom. Everyone listens, but only a few are called to the front to answer. Both roles are vital. Full nodes preserve history. Validator nodes build the future. So far, we've seen what nodes do and the roles they play. But the real reason they matter isn't just technical. It's about decentralization. Here's the heart of why nodes exist. Decentralization. Imagine if only one company kept the blockchain's records. If that server went down, got hacked, or decided to rewrite history, the whole system would collapse. That's how banks work, a single database controlled by one authority. Nodes change the story. Thousands of computers around the world all keep the same copy of the blockchain. No single government, 
company, or hacker can shut it down, because the data is everywhere at once. That's why people say, don't trust, verify. In crypto, you don't need to rely on a middleman. The network checks itself through nodes. And here's the twist. The more nodes a network has, the harder it is to censor or corrupt. That's why Bitcoin and Ethereum, with tens of thousands of active nodes, are far more resilient than smaller blockchains running on just a handful of machines. So the natural question is, can anyone join in and run one themselves? The answer is yes, and it's easier than most people think. A basic Bitcoin node doesn't need mining rigs or expensive GPUs. It's mostly about storage and internet. You download the blockchain, hundreds of gigabytes, keep your computer online, and your node starts verifying transactions. Running a simple node won't make you money, but it gives you independence. You're no longer relying on someone else's copy of the blockchain. Ethereum and other networks are heavier, so many people use cloud servers, specialized hardware, or even plug-and-play devices, little boxes that quietly run at home. Some hobbyists even use Raspberry Pi mini-computers, proving you don't need a data center to contribute. Here's the real point. Running a node is about control and participation. You validate your own transactions, help secure the network, and take part in the system that keeps crypto alive. It's like moving from renting space in a bank's ledger to holding a slice of the ledger yourself. Ethereum, Cosmos, or Avalanche. Validators compete for the chance to confirm blocks. If selected, they collect transaction fees and block rewards payment for keeping the system fair. Other projects go further. Filecoin nodes provide storage. Helium nodes provide wireless coverage. In these cases, you're contributing real-world resources and earning tokens in return. The trade-off is simple. The more valuable the rewards, the tougher the requirements. Validator nodes demand constant uptime, reliable hardware, and often thousands of dollars locked as stake. That's why most beginners don't go solo. They start by delegating or joining pools. Running a node feels empowering, but it's not easy. It must stay online almost 24 seven. It costs money, hardware, internet, cloud. Security's critical. Updates and key protection are survival. And responsibility matters. Cheat and you lose money. Support the wrong validator and you hurt the network. Running a node isn't just plugging in a box. It's managing critical infrastructure. Rewarding if done right, punishing if not. Decentralization only works when everyone plays by the rules. So now you know, nodes aren't background noise. They're the backbone that keeps blockchains alive. From the librarians who archive every transaction, to the validators who secure new blocks, to projects that transform storage or internet into tokens, the entire crypto system depends on them. Here's the bottom line. Crypto doesn't survive because of hype. It survives because thousands of independent nodes protect the rules, non-stop. Now it's your move. Will you stay a spectator or take your first step into how this system really works? And don't miss the next episode. Crypto Wallets explained fast how to keep your coins safe. Because earning is only the start. Protecting what you earn is where the real game begins.